guys, this next tutorial is going to be a brief intro into lists. Okay, so what is a list? A list is just a collection of values or data or geometry. So we could do one of two things. We could create a list using uh, geometry in Rhino. So I'll just make three curves here. And then I'll drop down a curve component into, into Grasshopper, and I'll set multiple curves, and then I'll select these three curves. And so now if we grab a panel component, and we inspect what's coming out of here, we can see that this panel is telling us there are three referenced lines. Now, an important thing to note, if you've never worked with coding or scripting or anything of the kind, is the, is the numbering convention. Uh, the number, a list of values always starts from item 0. So item 0 is the first number, item 1, uh, item, item one is the second number, and item 2 is the third number. So if we wanted to gain access to a specific item in this list, we could use what's called a list item. So we could either type it in or we could, we could go to the sets tab and under list we could find a list item. So I'm going to plug my curve parameter into this first uh, input here which is a list and then by default the list item will always retrieve item 0 which is the first number. And so we can see that when we select the list item and it highlights the first curve in the right of viewport. Uh, we, but we could use a slider if we wanted to, uh, if we wanted to get a different number out of this, or if we wanted to get a different item out of this list. So we'll double click the slider, we'll set it to integer numbers, and we'll set our maximum, um, our minimum can stay at zero, and our maximum can go to two. And then we'll plug that into I, and if we now select this list item, we can see that as we change, as we slide through the index values, we increase, our, we can go through the first item, the second item, and the third item. Okay, so now another way we could construct a list is either, uh, is one of two components, either a series component, or a range component. Now it's really important to understand how these two components work because they do a similar sort of thing but there's a key difference. Okay so we're gonna start with the series and we'll it's asking for three inputs so we're gonna make three different sliders. So the first input for the series is the first number. So we'll plug in this first slider and uh, we'll set the first number of the series to zero. Now the second uh, second data point that this component is asking for is a step. And so this is the increment between the values. So we'll plug in this slider, and that means that our step size will be 0 0.25 between each value. And the third thing it's asking for is a count. The so this is the number of values that we want to get out of the series component. So I'm going to double click this slider and I'm going to change it to integers because we want whole numbers. We want a whole amount of items. You couldn't, for instance, have 5.2 items in a list. You can only have 5 or 6 or 7 or any whole number. So I'm going to set my maximum value to 20. Okay, and then I'm going to plug it in. Now we're going to grab a panel so we can see what's coming out of it on the other side. And we'll see that, oh, that's a bit weird, there's nothing coming out. Well, the reason for that is very simple. We've set our count to zero, which means that we're asking for zero items out of the series component. But as soon as we increase it, we can see that we start to get more items. And so, What's going on here? Well, as we can see, we start the list from zero. 
it increments by 0 0.25, so 0, 0 0.25, 0 0.5, 0 0.75, and so on and so forth. And we put, and we asked for seven numbers. So as we remember, the list starts from zero, and we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven numbers coming out of that list. All right. Now let's move on to the range component. So for the range component, it's asking for two things. The first is a domain, and the second is the number of steps, which is similar to the count in the series component. So we're going to start by constructing this domain. So a domain is something that we can obtain from the math tab in Grasshopper. We're going to click on domain, and we're going to construct a domain. And so a domain asks for two values, a start value and an end value. So I'm going to just copy this slider from the series, and I'm going to double click it to edit it. I'm going to set my minimum value to negative 10, and I'm going to set my maximum value to 10. And then we're going to plug that into A. We're going to make a copy of it by clicking and then tapping Alt and releasing. And we OK. And so now we're going to set the start of the domain to negative 10 and the end of the domain to 10. And so now, once again, we need a number of steps. So we're going to copy the count from the series component and we plug it in. And so now, when we plug the range into this panel, what we get is a range of values from negative 10 to 10. And an amount of numbers in between. And so with 10 steps, that'll equally divide our range into increments of 2. So negative 10, negative 8, negative 6, and so on and so forth. And so now with this list of data, we could use it to construct a list of points or something of the sort. So I'll grab a construct point component again from the vector tab and plug the range into x. I'm also just going to quickly delete these curves because we don't need them anymore. And we can see as we change this end value on our slider, it updates the points in the Rhino viewport in real time. We can also increase the steps, decrease them, do whatever we want. If we plug the series in to the X component, you'll see. Oh, sorry. Plug the series into the X component. Uh, now we can increase the step size. We can increase the start, and we can increase the count. All right, so that's a basic look at lists. Uh, We'll see you next time.